Hi, I'm Mira Calton, Certified Nutritionist. And I'm Dr. Jason Calton, and welcome to Calton Nutrition Television and our show In Depth, where we explore the stories behind the leaders, visionaries, and innovators changing the world. Now, we've got a special guest for you today. His name is George Bryant. George Bryant is the creative genius behind the wildly successful CivilizedCavemanCooking.com website. Absolutely, which we use all the time, and the recipes are really incredible. So he's changing the world one bite at a time, it seems. Yeah. Now, George, after spending almost 20 years struggling with his weight, and of course, a lot of people who get involved in the health and nutrition world have this story. He and and after almost losing both of his legs while he was deployed with the U.S. Marines, he decided to start his own paleo journey, and that's really what brought him to this space. He has since uh, decided to start this website and. His goal is to give these paleo recipes to people to help them to understand how eating real food can be healthy and fun. And so, taste delicious. And taste delicious. <laughs> so great to have you on the show. Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. Well, absolutely. You've got so many exciting things going on. But I guess a lot of people, you're probably going to be new to a lot of people in our, in, our, in our community. So start off by just telling us, how did you get on this path? What got you in this, in this career that you're, that you're currently doing? Yeah, so like like Jason mentioned in my story, um, I it's no big secret if you go to my website, I struggled with eating disorders for a long time, body image issues, body dysmorphia, a lot of things that were seeded from a very young age in my childhood. Um, so I had done a lot, I'd made a lot of decisions in my life. I was really overweight as a child. I came from like a troubled past, social services, really, you know, my parents were alcoholics and drug addicts. And I just couldn't be around that environment. And when you're that age, it's really kind of hard to find your path or your goal or where you're going and, and everybody just wants to run. Well, lucky for me, I picked the hardest place to run and I tried to join the Marine Corps. I was like, you know what, if I'm going to run, I'm going to run as far away as possible. These people are going to send me to Iraq, Afghanistan, wherever they're going to send me, but I'll be far away. And um, I tried to join. I was overweight. My recruiter told me I couldn't do it. They helped me lose about 45 pounds so I could ship to boot camp. Fast forward a bit, went to boot camp. Um, came out of soaking wet, 155 pounds, and I went. I'm five seven, so I looked like Skeletor. You could see my cheekbones. It was, <laughs> it was not not a good, pretty picture. And then uh, that kind of started my career. But because I had never really addressed the seated issues that I had from a child of dealing with loving myself and seeing myself for who I was and the beauty that I had to offer outside of my physical appearance, I kind of started on this whole Napoleon complex. And I was like, well, now I'm in the Marine Corps. They pay me to be fit as possible, so I'm just going to do that. I'm going to try and work out and get as big as humanly possible, and I'm going to make up for everybody that made fun of me. So for like two or three years, all I did was lift and eat and lift and eat and lift and eat. And I got deployed to Somalia in 2004. I was there for 13 months. I was up to about 225 pounds at 5'7", and I was like wow. rock, rock solid. And I had no vision of stopping. Like I was just going to keep going. Like. Everyone's like, when are you going to stop? I'm like, when I have veins in my butt, when you can stop, <laughs> I'll stop. And I mean, it was, it was a pretty unhealthy obsession. And uh, what had happened on my 21st birthday, I was on a mission, and uh, I had about 100 pounds of gear on. I had to run to a helicopter, and I was running, and it felt like shin splints, but a lot worse. But I couldn't stop for the fact that I wanted to live and, you know, come home. So I, could, <laughs> I continued to run. I ignored the feeling and the pain. And uh, my legs went numb, and I'm like, all right, I almost made it. You know, I was like 100 yards from the helicopter, and then all of a sudden, I had this overwhelming, like, euphoria, like, excruciating pain, and I passed out. And uh, when I woke up, I was on a helicopter. Both my legs were bleeding profusely. There were needles in both of them. There were docks over me. And what had happened was I had exercise-induced compartment syndrome. So while running, all the blood was filling my anterior and posterior compartments, the overflow compartments were packed full of blood and couldn't go anywhere. So the blood was going into my foot but couldn't come back up. Yeah. And my heart continued to pump at 185 to 190 beats per minute because of the adrenaline, the heat, the weight. And my body pumped my blood so fast that it tore my skin open simultaneously on both legs. So I can literally say my legs exploded. Um, I've never heard I've, of that before. Insane. Yeah, so if I'm just going to give a disclaimer. If you Google it, do not eat before. I, I made a video a couple weeks ago and put a picture up and a people who got really mad at me, but it's called exercise-induced compartment syndrome. So fast forward that. I had six surgeries. I spent 12 months in a wheelchair, 18 months of physical therapy, and I ballooned up to 257 pounds at my heaviest. Right, and this wasn't packed muscle now. This is no, – this is this, 
this was muscle that turns directly into dead weight fat, just yeah. sitting in a wheelchair. And um, for someone that had struggled with a lot of insecurities and I had already struggled with body image, that was kind of the, the pot that tipped it over. And I was in a wheelchair. I was on pain pills and narcotics for close to 12 months to deal with the pain. So I was dependent on those. You know how those are with your hormones and your mood and depression. And then I had to look at myself every day and realize I couldn't do anything. They told me I was going to lose both my legs. I'd never walk again. I mean, pretty much like no one gave me any hope. And... Uh, it was, it's, that's probably the worst than when I spiraled out of control with my bulimia. I would binge eat every day and purge multiple times a day. I would sit there and cry. I remember physically abusing myself when I looked in the mirror. I would punch myself and hit myself and like a mild form of self-mutilation and it was really bad. And uh, it was one physical therapist, this little woman, she was like five foot nothing, 95 pounds, I was in physical therapy and I looked all sad and mopey and she walked in and she just didn't have that. She's like... I don't allow negativity in my life. So you, wipe that off your face. Like, nice. you're here for an hour and it's my hour. So get over yourself. <laughs> that was like the mentality that she had. And it that's what I needed. It was like a mentor and a guide to really, you know, pull me out of that nightmare and help me manifest and create my dreams. And she started me on this path. She did all my physical therapy. She made me sign up for a triathlon when I was still in a wheelchair. Like, oh. she just wow, that's amazing. didn't accept no for an answer. And uh, it probably saved my life. And uh, I continued on. I, uh, I ended up doing uh, multiple triathlons. I ran the Honolulu Marathon. And then I got back to the point where I was about 180 pounds. I was working out again like a fiend. I still wasn't eating healthy. I was still doing like carb rotation. I'd go to Buca de Pepo and eat pasta before <laughs> a race because I thought that's what made sense. Yeah. And uh, then on my last, my last trip to Afghanistan is kind of where everything kind of came full circle and hit me. I was out there. Um, I'd started CrossFit when I was in Afghanistan. Um, I tied the world record for a standing box jump. Like I had done all these things. And then just one day I was out on post. I couldn't sleep for like 24 hours. And I was like, I'm the opposite of most people. You know, reading puts people to sleep. Well, I don't read a lot. So when I read, it bores me so much it wakes me up. <laughs> so I was out on post and literally someone had Rob Wolf's book. Obviously, we all know who Rob is, the original human yeah. diet. And the guy that only reads picture books picked it up. I read it cover to cover in about, I don't know, like six or seven hours, and I was like, this is amazing. And the reason it resonated so much for me is because I had tried to control my diet for so long to control my insecurities of my body. If I eat this way, I'll look this way. If I eat this way, I'll look this way. If I do this, people won't think I'm bulimic. And when I read this book, it was another control measure for me to handle the situation and be in control. And I read the book. It resonated with me, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I started in Afghanistan. I did the best that I could. And then when I came home, I did a 30-day challenge, cut out everything, went strict paleo. I had never cooked before, so you can imagine the difficulties of that. Like you can't go out and order paleo food at a restaurant right. back then, you know, three and a half years ago. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. And I immersed myself in it. I'd find other websites, and I'd cook recipes, and then I'd share them, and they tasted good. I'm like, oh, this is actually pretty fun. And I was feeling amazing at the same time. So I was creating all these positive anchors to kind of seed this to keep going. And uh, it kind of caught on like wildfire. And I'm like, well, I need to do this because I feel better than I've ever felt. I look better than I've ever looked. But in order to kind of control my own insecurities, I need to hold myself accountable. So I started a, a blog. Right. And I, I didn't even know what a blog was at the time. And uh, <laughs> so I started sharing recipes. I remember I was posting like a recipe a day in the beginning, like, you know, 40 recipes a month, which was insane. <laughs> and <a> uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I would I would just, I kind of stuck to it. And it, it really jump-started this whole healing process for me. And I, I wouldn't say that I was cured immediately. You know, I was paleo and a paleo blogger for about a year, a year and a half before I really had faced my demons about still struggling with bulimia because I had some relapses and some bad Bonnie image, but it, it genuinely was the whole journey of me learning how to cook and building a website and, and getting people to comment on my recipes and send me emails that I changed their life that while I was at the Ancestral Health Symposium, I had a little too much tequila and um, Stephanie Ruper from Paleo for Women and Abel and I were out at a bar and we were just like bonding and talking and those are probably the two most amazing loving people I know. And they're just building me up to like this person that I didn't think was possible and complimenting me and creating this really safe environment. And then like literally out of nowhere, I told them that I was bulimic. And I've never told anybody in my life, no one. 
And I just felt so safe and comfortable that it came out in casual conversation. Wow. And then Stephanie being the amazing you know, woman she is and someone that studies this stuff kind of latched onto it and, and led some leading questions and you know, broke me down and figured out where to go. And then she had me for an interview. I shared it with the world. I wrote a post on my website. And that was literally the day that I was like healed. I was like, you know what? I don't ever have to do that again. And I learned how to kind of love myself through personal growth and self-discovery and and pretty much knowing that all these amazing people exist and I have to let them build me up and it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to be what people want me to be and, and I don't have to be the strong guy anymore, you know, even though I'm covered in tattoos and I was the Marine. You know, it's completely okay to be vulnerable and open and use my story to inspire and help others. Yeah, yeah, that is an incredible story. And, you know, it looks like when you started to teach people what you were doing and putting those recipes out into the world and helping other people, that's what really helped you as well because they were giving you the positive feedback. That was that was the therapeutic piece for me. It was, yeah. it was seeing other people use my story for motivation. And then every one of those stories that came back was just another positive anchor and another positive anchor. And, you know, in personal growth, we all know, like, that's what it's about. It's creating these small, manageable goals whether it's eating healthy or losing weight or overcoming addiction that build your confidence and keep you going. And literally, I can thank the paleo community, my audience, and friends like you guys and people that support me that kept this going and created a platform for me to continue to do this and stay healthy for the rest of my life. Well, we're a big fans of the Caveman Feast, so if people haven't uh, haven't seen that book yet, definitely go out and 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 find that. But there's uh, a bigger book coming. There is a bigger book coming. Yeah, you you got a new book coming out, thepaleokitchen.com. Uh, people can find it at the Paleo Kitchen. Of course, the name of the You're new book. You're pre-selling already for June, right? Yeah, we've been pre-selling for about eight months already. We uh, the that funny shows thing me, that just shows okay. Most people probably don't know that's not normal. Most people probably don't realize that's because this is so asked for. Yeah. That, yes. That's why he's pre-selling is because there's so much demand for this book from his audience, from people who are already using the recipes. So that's pretty impressive. I'm, I'm stoked. Uh, I'm doing it with Julie Bauer from Paleo OMG. We've been, we've been friends for a long time. And, you know, once I got let out of the Marine Corps and medically retired and I was like, I'm going to do this full time, we decided that we would do it together and we like why not just combine forces and we both really have some like out of the box creations with recipes we pair flavors that most people don't think of and then she's got like the best quirky personality she's hilarious to be around like it comes through in her writing and her food and then the I love the video is adorable yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. and then I love the food and the photography so we're like let's just do it together so she flew out from Denver eight times and stayed with me between a week and two weeks and we would knock out eight to ten recipes a day I'd photograph everything she would cook, I would cook, then photograph and type and clean and uh, I'm, I'm super stoked. I think right now the count is around like 120 recipes and every single one of them is brand new. No repeats, never been seen before and we have everything from desserts. There were a lot of desserts. We, we kind of had to cut some desserts out because I'm a... <laughs> I'm a you dessert. Yeah, you love You're it. Like you make dessert. amazing dessert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's you know, it's I'll always have the sweet tooth. I just realize that if I have to make a decision, eating one that is made of eight ingredients that I can all pronounce is always going to be the better option. So um, there's a few things in there. There's some surprises. We have a few fan favorites like a chocolate cinnamon swirl banana bread. Um, we made a blueberry cheesecake, which was to die for. I mean, I ate that thing in about a day with an almond butter crust and cashew cheese. And then uh, we made a, a vanilla bean cayenne chocolate cake. We made a uh, coconut chocolate cake with ganache. I even I even went to the baking store to buy the layer thing to make it different colors inside. Like, I stepped I stepped our game up for this one. Well, we're excited about that for sure. Now, let's just be, for some people who are watching in depth, they may not be absolutely aware of what paleo is. So just give them the kind of the basic ideas. When you're seeing all these cakes and these breads and these muffins, and these amazing things, we're not talking about the traditional style. Right. No, no. Yeah, so I love this question because my, my answer has evolved quite immensely over the years, you know, and I love people like you and the approach that you guys take because the whole dogmatic society piece that people create is just a huge turnoff to me. So my version of paleo, like the basic premise of paleo is that we avoid um, grains, legumes, and most dairy as well as all processed items. We want to eat ingredients that are in season, that are fresh, that are sourced sustainably and organically, and that includes like meats, nuts, seeds, vegetables, fruits, fish, all these amazing colorful foods. So stick to the perimeter of your grocery store before they added the bakery. Because you know now everybody yeah. and these these grocery store marketing geniuses know that yeah. people do this, so now they put the bakery and the cheeses and the the pre-food bar on the outside. So 
Um, but with my version of paleo, you know, one of the biggest things that we do this and we eat this way, whether you're paleo or primal or even vegetarian or vegan, you know, whatever your choices are, a lot of us are trying to heal chronic inflammation and let our bodies heal from the inside out. Right. So we really just want to avoid inflammatory foods and things that trigger all these responses in our body. And it's different for most people. You know, me personally, I'm lactose intolerant. Supposedly, I've been tested for, but I can tolerate grass-fed dairy. Yep. which tells me that I'm not necessarily lactose, but I'm allergic to the grains that are fed to traditional yes. calf of dairy. Yes. So it's really a big N1 experiment, and you kind of get to play, and that's the fun of it is, you know, you don't have to eliminate all these amazing things and foods that we have, you know. Maybe for 30 or 60 days, you're going to eliminate a lot of these things, eat a lot of whole foods, eat a lot of vegetables, and, you know, sustainably sourced meats and all these other things. But after that, when you're feeling good and you're beautiful from the inside out, like it's time to experiment. And that's where I come in with yep. my brownies and my cookies and my cake <laughs> and my pies. But the one thing to note is they're all made from real whole ingredients, everything that I've sourced. I make my own almond flour. I've made my own coconut flour, things that you can find at health food stores that are actually nourishing for your body and nutrient-dense when yep. you use them the correct way. Right. The only changes I ever make to yours are, I'll be honest, because everyone knows this about us, we don't eat sugar at all. Yeah. No so, honey, no maple syrup. No maple syrup, no honey. So we always have to like play with your recipes, which is, which is fun too. Yeah. Sit there and be like, okay, now how can we use the stevia to get the same consistency? And sometimes yep. you have to add more of other things like egg and stuff, just because obviously there's no syrup when there's honey. So, yeah, so the, the, banana, the banana bread should be a favorite then, because there's no sweetener in the banana bread. Yeah. Well, then I am definitely looking forward to that. <laughs> that's I have to tell you, that's my most popular recipe. It's been repinned like thirty nine thousand times on Pinterest. It is insane how many people make that recipe. Well, then what we will do is we'll probably yeah, put it here. We'll post and maybe it we'll even make it. Yeah. Show yes. Us. That would be great. If you were closer to my neighbor, I would deliver you one of the amazing variations I have. But we'll have to wait till we we meet up again. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. I will be waiting for some new bits. <laughs> yeah. Now your journey is an amazing journey. I mean, we and we touched a little bit on it. What have you discovered about yourself in this last year? Because you know, as as we grow and as you said, even your definition of paleo has evolved over the last few years. You know, talk to us about what you've discovered about yourself this year. Yeah, that's a that's an awesome question, and I'm not going to cry. You'll be my only interview I don't cry on. This will be a good one. <laughs> I, I practice this a lot. I get interviewed a lot, so everyone always makes me cry. So this is a good one. So yeah, the last year has probably been the most transformational year in my life you know like I just turned 30 which you know for a lot of people year 29 to 30 is tends to always kind of be a rough one where there's this transition and all these things are coming together and uh, you know in July I was medically separated from the Marine Corps you know I was planning on doing 20 years and retiring this big bad Marine and have this pension for the rest of my life and after you know the seven concussions from being blown up a few times and losing my almost losing my legs and everything else they're like we don't need you anymore you know so that was kind of a a sobering moment when you're like, okay, how am I going to replicate that? Like, what am I going to do? I've never owned a business. I've never done anything. And it's like, well, if I follow my heart and I stay passionate and true to my morals and I stay grounded, I can do this and I can change people's lives and help people. And that's where it started. So, you know, that whole out of the Marine Corps forced upon this really uncomfortable self-growth and transformational process that I did not see coming. It was almost like a, a redefinition of myself because everything that I thought was my identity was hidden in these structural things that I had been running from since I was 17 years old. You know, you got to remember when I ran, I ran when I was 17 and I spent 12 years every day being a Marine, helping Marines with their problems or dealing with other people's drama. And all of a sudden, come July, I'm out on my own and I'm sleeping in as late as I want. And all of a sudden, I'm like, who am I? Like, kind of focused on George. <laughs> no definition of who I was. And, you know, like I can tell you, I was interviewed a year ago about this and the same interviews, and, and it's always evolving and growing. And what I found is that that was the best thing that was needed. It was almost like a kick to the butt because I had to force myself into some serious self growth space, cut some electronics out, and do some like self love exercises and do a lot of reading and, you know, just internalizing who I really was and what I wanted in this world and and it actually created a platform to me to provide a better place and a safer place and a more positive place for people to come to my website and talk to me because like I can genuinely say that I love myself now like no I six months. so much maturity in you just so you know like I watch we've obviously been watching you've known you, you, know you now for a few years and I have seen so much maturity in your work now that you are like a full human being when you're when you're giving out your your guidance and everything it's not just I'm, I'm 
you know, you used to almost hide behind your recipes a little bit and not really want to say who you were and what your story was. And it's just really refreshing to see a really strong, masculine guy out there in the kitchen that's helping so many people. What's inspiring yeah. is you speak the way that you do, too. I think there's a lot of guys out there who be like, wow, he's really putting this out there. And I think, we, you know, everybody needs to hear this, but you don't hear it oftentimes from the tattooed Marine guy, you know. This is what you normally see when you tune in to maybe Oprah or something. But yeah. you know what? we need this, too. We, men need this as well. You know, that was, I think that was one of the biggest sh shocks. So the, the best thing for about me for this past year is having amazing supportive people like you and, like, the, the positive words that me are sharing and that you share. Like, those things drive me, and they keep me really grounded, though. You know, when I started this paleo journey and I started this website, like I stated, it was another place for me to run and hide. You know, it was this facade that I put up. If everyone thinks I'm the perfect paleo food blogger and I have a six-pack and I CrossFit, no one will ever know that I'm bulimic. No right. one will ever question me. No one will ever ask. And, you know, when finally I had those walls ripped down and I was exposed and open and vulnerable, those were the best moments of my life that I truly found out who I was and I found out what happiness was, you know. And that that's the key is, like, Absolutely no one in this world can put a value on me. No one can define what I have to offer. Only I can. And yeah. there's enough mean people and negative people in this world. I don't need them to hate on me, and I don't need to hate on myself. I'm going to love myself, and you can do as you please. Yeah. But you know what? My kindness will kill all of you because I'm going to smile and eat bacon and share it with the world. And hugs and bacon. Like, that's the key to happiness <laughs> in this world. I swear to God, it's hugs and bacon. Um, that's it. That's yeah, so the past... The past year has been amazing. I love it, and I love sharing as well. You know, like I used to be really timid about this and all these interviews about my past and my eating disorder and my bulimia and like losing my dad to cancer and all these different things. But now those are therapeutic for me because I'm using them as tools to guide and mentor others, yeah. and the response has been overwhelming. And, and surprisingly enough, you know, when I put that post up on my website, it's under the top 10 tab on my website, my bulimia story. Um, I got 5,000 emails in 20, like 24 to 48 hours, all personal emails, and it took me like four months to read every one of them, and I read every one of them, and I wrote back to every one of them, and uh, I kept stats on most of them, and like 66% of them were men, and then uh, what's crazy though is the youngest person that emailed me was 13 years old, and the oldest gentleman that emailed me was 71. Wow. 71 years of fighting with a internal struggle of self-worth and you know, this eating disorder and this whole thing. And it was amazing because all it took was someone else to break the mold and say, it's completely okay to be vulnerable and I don't need Oprah to do it or, or any place like that. I can completely be the masculine person that I want to be and actually more masculine and confident in who I am because I'm vulnerable and open and, and it's helped define me and make me just a, a better person all throughout and a more positive person to build people up for who they are and help exploit their amazing qualities and traits. Yeah, well, you're a true inspiration, and it doesn't hurt either that your recipes are amazing. So <laughs> no, that's you know that that's a plus. At least I have a job now. You know, like I, I have something I can do because without the recipes, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> well, we're gonna jump to uh, a question, couple actually. more things. What is your favorite food? Just out of curiosity, that's another one question we had to ask you. What's your favorite food? Not one of your recipes. What is yeah. your favorite food? Yeah. Well, all of my readers know what my favorite food is, and I'm not going to give my canned bacon response um, because that, that seriously is like one of the things that I love. But uh, yeah. if I had to pick another one, it would be sweet potatoes. Okay. Yesterday, I made a new recipe, so it's not up yet, so it's not one of my recipes. <laughs> okay. Um, I made sweet potato noodles with a spiralizer, and then I sauteed them with uh, some dried figs, prosciutto, and goat cheese. Yeah. And I added some toasted almonds on top of it, and it was absolutely life changing. And I ate probably four sweet potatoes because I couldn't stop. Ah, uh, <laughs> sounds so good. <laughs> and it's like lunchtime here, so we're just gonna see you <laughs> elevate while we're talking. You hear to that, you. Mira? So that's what we need yes, to be having. Yes. I just ate. I just ate the leftovers for breakfast, so it's good as breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I'll make that determination. Even all food, though, people really uh, yes. have an issue with this. I don't understand why somebody thinks this is a breakfast food, this is a lunch food, this is a dinner food. I can tell you right now, whatever I make for dinner, if it's leftover, it's breakfast. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the done differently. That's one of the, that's one of the most asked questions that I get. What can I eat on breakfast? Like paleo breakfast, which is funny. Paleo breakfast is Googled thirty-eight thousand times a month. Wow. It's, it's insane because people just can't figure it out because we're trained to think that breakfast has to be like pancakes or waffles or or even eggs. Well, I eat eggs for dinner more than I eat them for breakfast, <laughs> and I eat steak for breakfast more than I eat it for dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's all just flipped around. 
I'm kind of flipping and breaking the mold, but I mean, if it's food and it's delicious, I'm going to eat it any time of the day. Yeah. yeah. Jason makes a lot for dinner. Yeah, well, yeah. I, 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 I just, I just, all the food is so good, it doesn't really matter to me. There's no boundaries. I, like you said, I'll eat anything for any of the meals. So, now one of the things that you said was, I don't, I don't know what I would do if I hadn't found this spot, but we always like to ask the question, what would you do if you could do anything else and you, and you weren't doing job. this? If I could do anything else and not do this, I would love to be able to travel and speak to people about my story and the hurdles and obstacles that I've overcome to help inspire them through their own journey. Like I genuinely love people. Like it's probably one of the driving forces for me running a website and this is going to sound really cheesy but you know like I, I'm not a celebrity. I'll never be a celebrity. I'm just a food blogger. Like you follow me because I post recipes online and that doesn't make me special. But what I love is the platform that it's created for me to meet so many more people. Like I go to these book signings or like these events and everyone's like, oh my God, I'm so excited to meet them. And I'm like, I'm more excited to meet you. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. You, you really like, you've inspired me to change my life because you read my website and you comment and you write back and you give me feedback and all these things. And it's like, I get more giddy and excited to meet people that are fans than they do to meet me. Like I'm more humbled and excited and driven to do more. So I would definitely, if it wasn't for creating recipes and running a food blog, I would love to talk and just speak about motivation and inspiration and overcoming obstacles and adversity and, and breaking the mold and this whole you have to be manly and you have to be perfect and masculine all the time thing because I just think it's it's really disempowering and it's really weakening our youth and, and society in general by creating this man up, don't cry about it, or man up, don't do that, or a real man wouldn't do that. No, a real man would do that, and he would own it, and he yeah. would smile and be like, yeah, I beat it. What next? You know, yeah. like that's, that's the piece, so I, that's what I would do. Well, maybe you'll be doing that. I have a feeling you'll probably be moving in that direction. Yeah, that may, may or may not happen. We'll see. Well, here's another one. What is your least favorite word? Mm. My least favorite word. Wow. You know what? I will say that my least favorite word is negative. I will just say the word negative because it's kind of all-encompassing. And I wouldn't have said that six or seven months ago. But um, my girlfriend is an amazing role model, and she's really big in the personal growth and development space, and I've met some amazing people through her. Um, and one of the things that I've learned about myself and personal growth and development is manifestation and creating a positive environment for success and we are literally creatures of our own environment and what we create is what we get and all too often I do it as well I had a website issue two weeks ago I got infected with malware and my site got blacklisted for two days and I lost 80 percent of my traffic and it still hasn't recovered and I was like oh my god I lost this I lost this much money I lost this and Lindsay's like you're not finding value in it and like that's all she kept saying to me you're not finding value and I'm like Okay, and then I'd get irritated, and then, like, I was laying in bed one night, and she was sleeping, and I thought about it, and I'm like, God, I hate when she's right. And I just sat there, and I thought about it, and I'm like, but what can I learn from this? And it's like, okay, I'm glad this happened now and not six months from now when my book came out, or I'm glad this happened now and I could fix the problem. And, and so I love creating this positive space to bring out the best in everybody. You know, we have a lot of competition in our niche, but we're all really, really supportive. But at the same time, we all have books to sell and apps to sell and websites to go to. And I found the best thing for me that keeps me the happiest is never sharing my own stuff but always promoting everybody else because there are so many amazing and talented people and I'm just creating a positive space for them to shine and like kind of fall into their glory. And if people follow me, they do. If they don't, they go elsewhere and they resonate with them. So negative or anything to do with negative, I just – and no, no would be the other one because yeah. no is not really an answer anytime. Yeah, you, you know, one of the things that you said is that you really love meeting the people and that you love writing people back. And Mira and I feel the same way. We're so honored to really to, to meet these people that, you know, write to us on our website and when we go to these book signings. So that's always a favorite part of we the job. We still answer every single email that comes in yeah, to our website like ourselves. Yeah. And I have to say, half the time or we pick up the phone when someone calls and they're always like, oh, my God, I didn't expect it to be you. It's <laughs> like... Well, I didn't expect it to be you either. I'm like, how cool. Yeah. That's the best that's the best answer. Me neither. I didn't know. Yeah. 
I didn't think it's, it's, and don't you think a lot of people within our kind of our group they're just you know we're so collaborative this kind of group that we all stumbled onto you know within the last few years and they really are they're open and it's it's a different way of looking at things um, and that's also one of my favorite things but the question to you is besides the fans themselves or the people who who utilize your your great information and um, and the people within the community what's your favorite part of the job Oh, my favorite part of the job is is pushing my own personal boundaries and limits every day when it comes to what I think is possible or this box that we kind of mold ourselves into when with self-doubt and self-limitation. Like I look at my to-do list every morning or my inbox with a 160 emails when I wake up and none of them are spam and I have to read and write back to every one of them. It's like I look at these having a girlfriend and her eight-year-old daughter. I'm like, okay, I got to take Cheyenne to school and then I got to go feed Lindsay's horse and then I got to wash the dishes and make Lindsay breakfast, then do the emails, then write this post, then make a recipe, then launch this app. It's like you look at it on paper and you're like, I can't do that. And then at the same time, I smack myself and I'm like, no, I can do that. Like I have the ability to do this. Yeah. And I'm going to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like it's going to happen because there's people, like it's my duty to the people that follow me to give them this stuff. Like that's my responsibility. I created this job and it's my job to do the best that I can at it every day. So my favorite part is, is kind of pushing my own boundaries and myself out of my comfort zone every day to realize that I can go to bigger lengths and deeper de depths to get more value and content to people to change their lives more. It's, it's the most inspiring thing ever. Yeah. That's great. Um, now, additionally, if you could, I know, you know, you're meeting a lot of amazing people, obviously, every single time, like you said, your books and through people writing you, but is there someone on the planet that you could choose anyone to go to dinner with? Who would you have dinner with, or would you invite them over to your house and you would cook? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna name my trio. Okay. My, I'm gonna name three of them: Richard Branson, <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres, and Oprah. Those are my three. You've got heart, money, and humor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I think I mean Richard Branson is just an amazing human being. I follow everything that he does, and like his whole vision and mindset, and the entrepreneurial just effort that he puts into everything like that man has single-handedly launched nine billion dollar companies and it's yeah. not about the money the reason he does it is because he did, he's really amazing at exposing people's positive qualities and letting them shine in their own light yeah, he doesn't take credit man. for anything he is he is like the king of delegation and he's like if you want to be a successful entrepreneur you can't do everything yourself and at some point you have to realize even though it's your company there's a CEO <laughs> that can do it better than you. So yeah. hot yeah. them. Yeah, and, that's actually what we're learning this year. We're, we're yeah, learning and, to delegate. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that humble approach that he takes. Like that man's schedule is insane. He flies continent to continent every day, and he wouldn't change it for the world. And he talks to his employees, and he listens to them, and he's on all these boards and has all these nonprofits and still does Google Hangouts with people and offers advice. Like he is just the man, but here's the best part. He's never worked for anybody. And he always works from home where he can be with his family. And he doesn't work past a certain point in the afternoon. He's like, no, you can move that meeting till tomorrow because it's family time. Yeah. Right. So someone, he's just extremely rooted in family values and love and support and focusing on the important things while allowing other people to shine and have that moment and that glory and feel amazing. And, and he does it the right way. Yeah. All right, so that's Richard. You want to take that part of Richard. Now, what's the part of Ellen that you love? I just, that woman is a huge philanthropist when it comes to speaking, and she's such a giver, and she is just amazing, like, hearted. I mean, she doesn't eat meat, so that's her only one, one knock against her. You have a hard but time I, in your kitchen. <laughs> I, can, I can move past that. I have some vegetarian dishes that I can do. But just watching her and, like, you know, like, this is going to sound cheesy because I guess it's like people watch us, but watching her growth over the years and, like, what she's accomplished and the difference that she makes in people's lives is awe-inspiring and she does it all through love. There's no drama, there's no negativity, there's no gossip. It's it's one of those same principles, you know, like surround yourself with people that are going to build you up and be a good role model for you and, and she builds everybody up and in, in turn ends up creating a bigger footprint to change the world and it can be through humor or it can be through love or tears or she's just an amazing giving woman and what you see portrayed on television if you follow her it's just her heart, and you can't really put a measurable amount of, I guess, any any anything on her heart. It's just amazing. It's beyond huge. And then Oprah, um, I'm just 
you know, my girlfriend knows Stedman, her boyfriend, and they've hung out multiple times in the internet marketing space. And, mm -hmm. and that woman is just an inspiration, you know, from when she started to where she yeah. didn't accept no. You know, she didn't accept the confines of a box. She's like, no, I don't care who you think I am or what you think I can or can't do. Right. I'm going to do it anyways. And yeah. she created a platform of this billion dollar company in this platform to reach people and change lives and do it on her terms from following her passion and sticking true to those values and you know like I just have the most adamant respect for people like that like they inspire me every day to be better yeah, yeah. Oprah's almost a combination of Richard Branson and <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres right I mean yeah so if I have <laughs> I just I figure like with a couple glasses of wine and some good food like that would make for an interesting dinner conversation. Yeah, like that would, would just love be to crash that dinner party. An epic, epic dinner conversation. It's on my, it's on my dream board too. So oh, good. it will at one point. They're all three of them are going to eat with me. I don't, I don't care how many. We'll <laughs> do it all be together. Yeah. I'm not sure they'll all be at the same yeah. table, the but they'll all each be of them separately. If I accomplish my goals, I'll find a way. Maybe it's a charity dinner or something, but I'll get them together. Perfect. Now you know that we love to travel, um, oh, and yeah. that's where our <laughs> big inspiration was for you know our ancestral style uh, diet philosophy and and you know seasonal approach goes. So, but if you could pick a dream vacation, and again we're just you know we're just trying to Put let people get to know you know yeah who you are, really what your dreams are. Where would you go? Yeah, Lindsay asks me this one all the time, and I'm always teetering for two, but I think my final one, and you've probably been there since you guys have been everywhere in the world, uh, I, would, I would go to probably like Bora Bora or Fiji. Um, yeah. you, you know, I lived in Hawaii for four years, and I was like, I kind of got beached out and island fever because I lived there and I didn't have a choice, but one of the things that I'm really bad at, and this isn't necessarily a flaw, but I cannot cut myself off. Like, I always want to feel connected to my audience and my phone or my computer or my comments or my Facebook, my Twitter, my Instagram, like they're all right here or the iPad or the you other two maps. With you, we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'd like to go because just places like that, I think a lot of people don't spend enough time with themselves and I think that's a huge issue and struggle that people have in the world is, is we're so wrapped up in all these things that we do every day, whether it's a commute to work or pleasing the boss or dealing with this then kids' homework and gymnastics or dinner and cleaning and this and then bed and it's like, at what point is it you time? And right. I think a lot of people end up having these like midlife crises or identity crises or depression or breakdowns because they've never actually spent time with themselves. Yeah. And when you remove yourself from that, if it's not something you're comfortable or confident with, you can end up crashing pretty hard. So I love shutting my phone off at certain points of the day or closing my computer and just sitting there and thinking or picking up a book or taking notes and writing down my thoughts and forcing myself to be okay with myself because you know yeah. at the end of the day we can't rely on anyone else for our own happiness it's all a projection of our insecurities and most of it's a nightmare that we're creating because this is my favorite thing I love this I've read all these books you know like the four agreements and the fifth agreement and all these different things and it's like every time that we think the world is ending we're like freaking out I'm crying this is gonna happen it's gonna be so bad a week later if I ask you about it you don't even remember yeah yeah you don't all even, that stress, all that chaos, and it led nothing, me there. Nothing. It had nothing to do with you. It was completely out of your control and circumstances that had nothing to do with you. So I pick Bora Bora or Fiji because I can get a private hut with my friends or my family or people I love and spend nothing but quality, quiet time. No electronics, nothing. We'll make it as awkward as possible because they have to interact with me face to face and eventually we're going to break the mold and get to a whole new level of deep conversation and I'm, I'm sure you two know like you guys are the most adorable couple in the world like <laughs> from the day from the day I met you you know like I met you guys because you had known Diane and you met her on the yeah. cruise but like all that travel and everything you guys did together that was nothing but pure quality time with each other in your unnatural environment so you couldn't be comfortable you couldn't create this thing that didn't exist you had to be yourselves and I think that's huge for developing relationships and even business relationships like if I have business meetings and stuff like I like to get out of my element and go places where it's kinda neutral and both of us can be the same and if you know I think that's the best part about masterminds like people that do like remote destination masterminds yeah I think it's genius because you're forcing someone out of their comfort zone into an area they've never been into a meeting they've never been and they kind of have to let their guard down. They don't have their secretaries or their business partners or their wife or their house or their car. Like they can't leave. Yeah. So they kind of have to be themselves. So 
Yeah, I pick that. That's a really deep answer for going to Bora Bora or Fiji. Oh, no, it's I, I, actually a fantastic yeah. place. Mal checked out the Maldives too. Yeah, very much, very oh. much the same. Uh, There's a few. I saw this post on BuzzFeed a couple weeks ago, though. Like the top 40 hotels in the world. We checked sure, out a bunch of them. <laughs> I'm sure you've been to probably 38 of them. Did you yeah. see the one that was um, with the? You saw them the, sitting in an, the a dome. Place with the fish. Yeah, that's that's actually one of the places we went. It's yeah, great. in the Maldives, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. It'll, it'll really be there expensive. soon, but I, I made I made some some checks on some of those. I don't want to go to the ice hotel, like I'll pass on that. But there were there were some in there that um, like the waterfall restaurant. I think it's in Thailand. Like I want to go there. I think that actually, there's actually that one. There's actually one in Vietnam too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah, I want to go there. Like I'd love to sit in a waterfall and eat. As weird as that sounds, like there's nothing more about serenity than that. The waterfall is so loud you can't talk. There's <laughs> actually a great place. Um, what's what's the name? The guy who owns it. It's in, um, Where? you know, this speaker who owns that place that they oh, basically set Namale. you up. In, yeah. Namale, yeah. Namale. It's uh, Robbins. Yeah, Tony Robbins. Tony, Tony Robbins, Robbins Hotel. Okay. And they Fiji. actually set you up in a different remote location every single meal. It's the most amazing experience. They'll put you under a waterfall one day, just the two of you. They do it, and none of the people at the hotel are ever in the same space at the same time. So. Wow. That's 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 great. Yeah. See, before I ever travel, you two will be my my personal <laughs> travel consultants, no. and I'll get all the notes. We would Fantastic. love to do that. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the big things that we did. I mean, you know, for anybody who doesn't know, we basically both uh, retired back in two thousand and one, and we wanted to travel around the world and really give ourselves the opportunity to experience what the world had to offer while we were still young enough to do it. And you know, it was a scary thing. A lot of people look at us now and say, "Wow, what an amazing adventure!" But Think about it. it. Were you so willing naive. to give up your career, your career at 30, <laughs> you know, 32, and go out there during your most productive years of your life and just travel? And but for us, it was something we wanted somehow. to do. Yeah. I don't think you can uh, call it traveling. You guys were gone for like six years. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Seven, yeah. Yeah. And the funny thing is, we never had a phone. We no. didn't even no. own a cell phone, which now I think about is so insane. But we were literally in like the middle of these weird places, and we didn't even have any communication. Yeah, I like, think I think that's amazing, though. That's like that's so admirable for me. Like I traveled not on my own accord. You know, I got to go to all these places in the Marine Corps and deploy and stuff. But um, I think that's amazing because that that's the thing. A lot of people that we encounter, you know, what's crazy is like. As I do this, I realize that I'm more and more of like a business mindset and entrepreneur, and I advise a lot of businesses on like marketing and building your business and how to start. And I get these emails from people, and they're like, they have these amazing stories and these amazing passions and these tools that can change the world, but they're all scared to use them because they are afraid to take that leap of faith and kind of put it out there. And and you guys kind of took that to a different universe. I mean, that <laughs> share, I mean, it's so important to share your gift, whatever it is. I mean, everyone. Everyone has something that they do well. And that, this is what we talk about. The tribes that we stayed with, every single person had a job. Yeah. They were the best person at the fishing. They were the best person at carrying the fish back to the village. They were the best Making in the, the kitchen. Yep. Everyone had a purpose. And everyone in this world, although it's all made of you know, buildings and concrete and whatever, we still all have a purpose. We're still all a community. And we still need to have that interaction. And that's one of the things that the paleo and primal and just ancestral group does very well. We all kind of come together as that tribe, and, and everybody's got their own little piece of that. You know, you you're you're the recipe king. I mean, you you know, when we, <laughs> anybody wants to have a great recipe, we say, hey, go talk to George. You know, go to his website. If they need to know about micronutrients, yeah. they usually talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> but we no, I I think you're I think you're 100 percent correct. That's my favorite thing, and what I've learned because of my girlfriend being in the internet marketing space in real estate, I go to these conferences with her. And she just, it's kind of hard to explain what paleo people do for each other because we go to these conferences and there's people stealing and replicating each other's products and stealing profits and customers, right? And she's like, wait, you're sharing that? I'm like, yeah, I don't need to sell my book. I'm going to sell their book this week. Yeah. And she's like, oh. And like, we're just this amazing community of building people up. And that I think that's why we're so successful. Like, my favorite question is, what do you think paleo is going to be in 10 years? Do you think paleo is a fad or do you think they're going to make it? I'm like, I don't really care. Paleo is a community of like-minded people that are making a huge difference, and we don't really care if you join us or not because eventually our positive example and the things that we are doing to help people and build people up are going to spread waves so far and vast that you're not even going to be able to compete with us, and you're going to end up joining us anyway. It's like positivity yeah. is so contagious. 
Right. We just don't we don't label it for our groups because basically we think that everyone can yeah. get whatever dietary profile they want. But it's yeah. all about food quality. It's about improving food quality, improving people's health, and finding what works for you. Yeah, and that's exactly what you do, George. And also, you just answered my last question. What 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 do you what do you see for the future? So that's what you know. And whether or not they call it paleo or they call it whatever it is that it is, you know, what we're talking about is the food quality. You have got to get you know. One of the things that you mentioned was that with the dairy and, and the cows were probably eating you know grains and what probably more likely is the genetically modified grains. This is something yes. that you know people don't think about. They're like, what's the big deal? You know, but it is a big deal because these proteins are completely new. And like you said, that's probably more likely that you're allergic to those genetically modified grains than you are lactose intolerant. Yeah, that's why I love your last book. Actually, all the charts. Remember, I'm the I'm like the crayon drawing colorful guy. Like I yeah. need to see pictures. Yeah. So <laughs> I got that. I'm like, yes. And then people are at my house, like, what do you think? But I'm like, hey, look at this. See, picture <laughs> right there. Um, but I think you're 100% correct. And and I should I should uh, clarify. So when people ask me about paleo, my elevator pitch, I use paleo because it's shorter than 90 seconds, which normally it takes me to explain. But my 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 favorite thing is when I started, I was really dogmatic because I thought it had to be an all or nothing approach. You know, and that's where the evolution of growth and maturing. And you know, I'm not the same snot nosed marine that I was when I met you. And uh, I really just get motivated knowing that people are making a decision to look into their health. Yeah. Right. So I have so many people that are like, hey, can I make this recipe with traditional flour? And I'm like, I honestly don't know. I'm like, I've never done it. The recipe was made this way. But in my head, I'm like, they found my website. They're here for a reason. I just seeded a trigger and a social trigger for them to come back. So if that recipe fails or doesn't taste good, maybe they'll come try it with coconut flour. And then they're like, wow, this tastes amazing. What else can I make with coconut flour? And like yeah. the whole process that kind of goes through, like that's that's probably my favorite thing. And I love the way that you guys take it because it is a community and it's it's no different. And I, and I don't see why paleo and veganism and vegetarianism and primal can't all be under the same roof. Like we're all – doing the same thing, we're just putting our unique spin on it. But we're all really against the same thing, against genetically modified foods and against processed crap and the industrialization of the food system. We all want to be able to make our own independent, healthy choices for what we think is the best. Right. And it's all about education. And with what they were educated with, those are the decisions that they're making. And what I'm educated with, I choose a paleo lifestyle. But in the end, we're all just making educated decisions. Right. Yeah. And working together, we can really change the food exactly. and the whole, you know, systems in, in America. And that's by not doing what they try to make us do, which is that infighting, you know, between yeah. the groups. So if we just get that out of the way and support each other and say, as long as you're trying to make yourself feel better and be healthier, that's great. Um, you know, I think we can really make some big changes this year, hopefully. Yeah, that's what we were so passionate about is, you know, there's so much infighting within the the, the, the communities, like the vegans and the paleos and the low-fat and low-carb. You see it on Facebook. And you do. <laughs> and we were just, we wanted to really say, well, let's let's look at what our common strengths are. That's, in, in, in Naked Calories, we talked about the Nutrivore, and that's a, that's a term that we kind of coined, and we said... Why don't we just look at food quality? Since that's really what we all want. If you're a, if you're a vegan, you still want food quality. If yeah. you're a paleo, you still want food quality. That's the one unifying theme that I think we can all kind of come together under. And I'm, and you know you're a big proponent of that as well. So let's just talk a little bit about your amazing app. You just launched this amazing app and went to number it's four in the world, it. number one <laughs> in food and health in the U.S. It's been there for months. Um, yeah. Where can people go to see this? Yeah, I'm super stoked about this. This was kind of like a pipe dream come true. I was like, let's do an app. I'm like, okay, sure, why not, right? Um, <laughs> but yeah, so Caveman Feast is the name of the app. It's in iTunes, and it's on Android now as well. So we have the Google Play and Android covered as well as iTunes. But yeah, so we, we kind of developed this app as a spinoff of Caveman Feast. We added some functionality, shopping lists. We're going to be adding meal plans. We're going to be adding some video content in the near future. But, yeah, I was super stoked because we launched and we were beating Angry Birds. And we've been <laughs> consistently beating the Food Network for the past five months. And That's anytime true. I can shove it into big corporate sponsorship for genetically modified foods faces, I'm like, yeah, two paleo bloggers are beating you without the corporate backership. So <laughs> I just amazing. want you to know people want real food. Like they That's really right. want real food. And well, uh, again, your book, your book again, the paleo it's going to be on June Paleo Kitchen. Everyone go can go there now and do their pre-orders and all that sort of jazz as well. It's the best place for them to find you at civilizedcavemancooking.com. That is the best place. Links to all my social media, my cookbook, my free ebook that I'm giving away right now, the app, everything's there. It's a whole plethora. 
Yeah. Well, That's you're a complete fun. inspiration. You really are changing the world. Thank you very much for being with us on In Depth today. Oh, um, okay. Is there anything you want to say to the people before we go? Actually, yeah. I just want to thank your community for listening and thank you guys for having me. And they're gonna they're interviewing me, but the real truth is that they're both amazing. So you should make sure that you support both of them because I love them both dearly. There's my closing statement. Thank you so well, much, thank George. You. Thank you, George. Well, it's awesome. been a real pleasure. And for everybody watching, we hope you enjoyed this interview. Um, until next time, uh, we'll see you again back here on In Depth. And if you haven't checked out our two new shows, we've got one called Treadmill Talk. Where we get really geeky. Yeah, we, go, <laughs> we walk you through this week's nutritional headlines. And we have another one called House Calls, where we answer your questions. So keep them so coming. So keep the questions coming in. Thank you again for joining us. And remember, life's a journey. Discover health. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.